All right, guys, surprise for Spoken Demo Revisited live stream. So I've had some time to actually play this game, this demo, multiple times on various difficulties. I've explored more or less the outer boundaries and such of the demo's area. I've found a couple more warp points. I've um, found a couple more houses, and I've gotten a little bit more familiar with the crafting and such. The reason why I'm a little bit more... Uh, I guess attuned to how this game turns out more so than Crisis Core. I was going to live stream three games. It was God of War Ragnarok, it was Crisis Core, and also this game when it comes out in about a week or so. Couldn't do it for God of War Ragnarok because my finances were not uh, in a good place at that time. Also, it was during my transition period. Crisis Core, two things. Number one, I was doing my making my game at the time and also um, for the most part, Crisis Core is exactly the same as the original game, and there wasn't much different aside from the VAs and a couple of little gameplay things, but in terms of the overall experience, it wasn't anything particularly different. I will eventually go back to it, but I think closer to the time when Rebirth eventually releases. But for Spoken is important, and here's the reason why. Whether it admits it to it or not, Forspoken does have a lot of Final Fantasy XV heritage. What's on the agenda today? A little God. white monster pummeling, perhaps? Forspoken's got it. What the fuck? Uh. Motherfucker, dude. Uh. Yeah, I'm playing on the hardest difficulty now. So, uh, these enemies are no joke, but I have had some, some opportunities to uh, buff up my skills. I'm a little more familiar with this thing. Okay. Well, do what the mother... Oh, no. god damn it. You have to stop your attitude, huh? Yeah, uh, on hard mode, these enemies are no joke. Are you some kind of a super alpha? Huh. They don't stagger very easily at all, and one hit will take you down to, to critical health. Okay. Come on. Come on, I need my conflagration. Conflagration! Oh, I got these. I got these skills too. Minions, help me out! Yeah, once you get used to some of the combat mechanics, it and on uh, the hardest difficulty, at least for me, the game is actually quite fun. At least in terms of oh, in terms of gameplay, haven't gotten much in terms of the narrative story bits, but uh, we are seeing everything. I. I admit, um, it's a bit piecemeal, because it is just a demo. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on! Ugh, eat that, you freaking piece of luggage! Oh god, you're still alive. There we go. Yeah, you get used to it every, every once in a while, when you, uh, when you're in the groove. Uh, this really helps. There's a slowdown mode where you can slow it down to so everything stops, so you have time to think. Getting back to what I was saying about FF16, this game has a lot of Final Fantasy XV's heritage, whether it admits to it or not. It's literally using the same engine. FF15 and this game are games that are heavily defined by the engine. Oh, that guy's dead. So how, at least from my experience, how a game is developed is that you decide on the game first. You decide on the mechanics, you decide on what the game's gonna be, and then you decide on the engine that you're gonna use that will best give you that experience, that will best give you the tools that will make delivering that experience easiest. Game engines like Unity, which I'm learning right now, and Unreal, they're kind of all-purpose engines, which will, uh, which explains why there's so much bloat in the code, even for very simple games, because it has to load a bunch of libraries. This game, I think it's sort of like, um, I guess like a, a, a bastardized stepping stone to Final Fantasy 16 because it's the next logical evolution after Final Fantasy 15. The reason why I originally wanted Final Fantasy 16 to be in a more open world kind of experience isn't because I think that 
an open world Final Fantasy is inherently a better game. It's just that if there is a game, an open world game that can justify its open world design, I think 16 would benefit greatly from that because it's essentially, it's like a Final Fantasy world that you can live in, right? And you, there's lots of stuff that you can do. The problem is that a lot of open world games don't justify their open world design. And I'm sort of getting that from this game so far, but I can't really say until we finally play the final game. I did not get that from Final Fantasy 15. You worry about this game? I am too, but I, I can't 100% say just yet because I think a lot of perception of this game is based off of the trailers and it's also based off of this demo. But as we've seen, this demo and also the trailers is not... There's some weird inconsistency in how it's delivering the message of what the game is going to be. You know, like apparently this demo is not what the final game is going to be like either. Um, you're, what you're getting here is essentially you're getting Frey um, at a very late part of the game. You know, but but from what I'm seeing here so far, I I can't say that this game justifies its open world design yet. I mean, there's stuff to do. And the messaging from the last trailer was, well, what do you do in this game? You know, and that's the big question we also had with 7 Remake is, cool, who, here's the cool bombing sequence, here are the cool characters, here's some cool levels, but what do you do in the game? And I sort of have the same question about FF16. We've seen the cool combat, we've got the world lore, we've got the cool characters, but what do you do in the game is the big question. And I still don't know. We saw, you know, Clive traveling across a desert land with a chocobo. So we have some confirmation of exploration and party interaction. But that's a good question. Like, we know we're going to visit towns, but what do you do? A game like Horizon is one of the few open world games I can think of that truly justifies the open world design. Because the way the story is told is that it needs that open world interaction in order for a lot of the, the lore bits to make sense. You know, and Ghost of Tsushima to some degree, but a lot of open-world games do not justify like their design. It's just, oh, it's open-world for the sake of being open-world. And, and I fear, one thing much. I fear about this game in terms of the open-world design is that I, I think that the engine somewhat dictated that. You know, it, it dictated, yeah, and Guardians of the Galaxy is a good example too. It's a game that I, I think it wasn't marketed very well. And from the trailer bits that we got from the Square Enix Presents in spring, I think of last year, it didn't look like it was all going to be that fun, but it was actually quite, quite good. Uh, Babylon's Fall is the example of the opposite. <laughs> I'm not sure that anything that we've seen so far is indicative of the final product. But in terms of gameplay, in terms of the graphics, some people are saying like, oh, it's a bit f flat, but I don't know. It's not, it's not bad. I mean, it's cool that you know, a lot of the the environments react to her movement. I mean, see this rock. There's like there's um, there's elevation that's taken into account, right? Like you see how her foot it slants upward as it touches the rock. That's very Final Fantasy 15. You know, so I, I, here's the thing: for this is not a Square Enix game per se. It's uh, a subsidiary of theirs. But I'm usually not worried ever about graphics and. Uh, technical achievements in a Square Enix game. Usually in their AAA games, we're good on that. I'm always usually much more concerned about how its narrative works. Another 15 worldwide. Um, I'll slightly disagree. I think this game has way more, at least from what I'm seeing so far, way more elevation. There's way more... Uh, variation in the environments, whereas 15 feels like just one giant long stretch of road. And that makes sense because it was made during a time when the hardware just wasn't there. Um, but I see what you mean, like in terms of the blandness of like, well, one area looks kind of like another. Yeah, um, going from one place to the other, it it's like a single player MMO kind of experience where you're moving for, and the enemies don't have much variety either there's a bunch of alligators and some plant dudes and um, a couple of alpha versions of them but that's kind of it something's there what should we do Ugh, could pretend we didn't know I, I think ultimately well, here's the problem i think i actually enjoyed for 
for what it was, I actually enjoyed Final Fantasy 13 more than 15. And in a way, I sort of enjoy 15 more than this game. And I think it comes down to the characters. It's hard for me so far to know why I care about playing this game. Other than just like typical open world stuff, like, oh, you can gather things, you can craft things, you can upgrade your cape, you can fight some enemies. But beyond that, what is there? There's cool, I like this, I love the parkour, I love the movement. But that's all kind of superficial, you know? It's all important, but it's all superficial. I mean, this is cool. Doing all this crazy stuff is cool. Okay. And I guess that kind of what it boils down to. Is that all this game has? Just, you know, some more polished graphics? Yeah. And it's incredibly weird that the marketing has been so scant, I guess. Because they've got some pretty high caliber talent. The, the same guy that that did the music that did the music composition for this game also did the music composition for God of War. Elle Belinska is not some B actress, she's quite big. So, like what's going on? You know? Weird. Very weird. That dude's dead. You're not dead! Yeah, for me, I think this game's gotta be played on hard mode. Like, it's just not very satisfying for enemies to die too quickly. It's a large, empty landscape after playing the game to do open world well, it's hard. Yeah, it's... Well, there are open world games... I'm sorry, there are linear games I feel like could benefit more from an open world. I mean, potentially, if the gameplay is there. FF7 Rebirth, it's, it's got more of a zone system from what we're seeing or what we're predicting. FF16 is more or less going to be the same thing, which is, there's nothing inherently wrong with that. But I think if they can truly make the gameplay justify the open world design, I think people would jump all over an FF7 open world, truly open world game. That's like, because it's a world and characters you really love and you want to explore, right? And FF16, probably less, maybe a little bit less so since we don't have the game just yet, so we can't really tell. How much we're going to enjoy the characters and such but the hype is there so there are more linear games that would benefit i think from an open world design however there are open world games that i think would benefit greatly from a more linear design and ff15 is absolutely one of those games um there were a lot of places in that game i mean there weren't a lot of places to really explore outside of the the big like holy city and such but a lot of the events and places that you come across in that game it feels like it would have been so much better had it been more linear and got you to really focus on those characters you know the danger zones yes i did i i fought the big huge crazy alpha boss which took me like seven tries because every single hit would take you down to critical health the problem with many open world games is that i think the designers run out of ideas like here, okay, here's an, a little island. Here's a treasure chest. Okay, how's that different from this little isthmus over here or an archipelago over there that has the same kind of treasure chest and the same kind of enemies? And that's what actually Ghost of Tsushima did quite well is that there's areas on the very edges of the map, but they're optional. They're optional, but they're super hard to reach. But once you reach them and you discover Break. them, same with the... Um, not enough to be a problem those cavern areas in horizon well, you, that were optional right. you didn't have to do them but then once you found them it's like the rabbit hole goes deep and you're super rewarded assassin's creed too you're rewarded for doing all these optional extra things and i hope that's the same thing for ff16 it's like after ff15 this game just kind of went on its own path and then ff16 went on its com a completely different path with a completely different team too yeah, her spells, the spells, the variation of the spells, the variation in the the parkour movement, and just fighting enemies, I think, is going to be the huge selling point of this game. And besides, just keep in mind that we, we are not getting the full character of Frey just yet. There are pieces of footage in the trailer that show you fighting in New York as well, so right now it's all sold us on this mythical world of Athia and I imagine that this is where we're going to be spending most of our time um, 
trailers can often feel like you're in a movie, you're, you've seen the entire thing, but not so in a video game. So we might be getting everything just totally distorted. Have I played Elden Ring? I have played Elden Ring. I played it for about four hours. Maybe it's because I am completely new to that world, but it didn't quite do it for me. For the same, actually, weirdly enough, for the same reason that. See, here's a weird thing. I think Elden Ring is a game that justifies its open world design from what I played. This game is essentially doing kind of the same thing. It's giving you a character you have no context about and a world you have no context about. But in Elden Ring, it's even more so detached, I guess, because your character has no dialogue and no personality. It's just um, a generic kind of MMO character you create. But from what I played of Elden Ring, it's, it's open world design in the sense that, like how Dragon's Dogma, it doesn't require that you beat every single enemy that you come across. Like it doesn't encourage you to fight every single thing. You are encouraged to go away for a little while and then buff up and then come back later. I get some sense of that here, except they gave Ella a, I mean, I'm sorry, Frey, a personality. So I don't know, it's hard, like, it's, these open world games, the more open world they are, I think the harder it is to sell them. Like, you have to really, really sell why the player, especially no one, someone with no context is going to care about the game so much. Got so much on your plate, but I just beat The Witcher finally and finally realized why it got so much acclaim. Yeah, um, The Witcher as well. In a lot of games, there's what's called the barks, like a lot of dialogue in the background, and there's a lot of filler and throwaway dialogue, especially here between Frey and the Cuff. They talk a lot, but it's not like it really adds to like moving the plot forward, or it doesn't really add anything to their characters per se either. They're kind of saying the same thing over and over again. And even when they have variation, they're not adding anything more. Well, in The Witcher, it's different. Like, you'd be traveling from one location to the next with Geralt and he's talking to another NPC, but along the way, like, there's a conversation that moves the character development with a plot forward. You know, but I don't get that here. But again, it is just a demo, so I, I can't tell. If Final Fantasy 16 is kind of like this, except, except you can't, like, scale up mountains, obviously, right? Like, Clive can't scale up like a freaking mountain. I mean, as far as you know. But like, like this is the, it's an open world, it's an open world-esque area, but these are the invisible boundaries right here. Like you can't pass this. It's open linear in this sense. I think that could work. If this were Final Fantasy 16's world where it's like, it's this open, but it's not like open, open. You know, like it feels open enough where there's enough variation for them to do stuff. Then Ugh, I think it'd be totally cool. Being as in well. this place makes me miserable. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I'm so. I have hopes for this game. I'm so ambivalent. And I, I, I think it ultimately comes down to the character. Like, how much do you actually care about the play and everything she does? Oh my god. This relates to character somewhat, but it is a part of the the combat and the game design as well. One of the hardest things to do, and I'm seeing that here in this game is it's not just making combat satisfying, it makes it's making it repeatedly satisfying. Like you have to want to engage the enemies. Okay, there's there's variation in attacks, sure. But is it fun to repeatedly kill things? And this comes down to also character because do you enjoy spending time with the character? You know, if I were if the, if Frey were Yuffie and this were Midgar or around Midgar it wouldn't necessarily matter if the combat were repetitive, for lack of a better word, per se, because you enjoy being with Yuffie, right? You enjoy listening to what she has to say. You enjoy listening to her kick the crap out of things. Um, and we'll have to see about Final Fantasy 16. But so far, everyone seems to be like really, really hyped for the characters and such. And the world is, they very smartly in the Ambition trailer built out the world to be a very defined kind of thing. So in a story sense if you care about the world or you care about the characters and I think especially in a Final Fantasy game you can forgive a lot you can forgive more I think than most people realize I hope that the open zones for FF16 are about the size of the zones in 14 big enough but not so big that they overstay their welcome 
Um, as big as 14? I mean, I don't know. 14 zones were actually quite big. There wasn't very much to do in the zones, but if it's like this, if you mean 14 in a sense like this size, like where the, the mountains, Just those mountain thinking, ranges are like the invisible barriers, I think that can work. All the big words. I think that can absolutely work. The combat can be confusing here. Um, it was initially at first for me, but not so much. What you can do is go here in the settings. Go in the settings and um, choose this. Uh, here, spell switching, slow down, go to full pause. It makes it so much easier to take the time to think because everything slows down to a complete halt. It is a little confusing because they're using the R, the, um, the L2 and the R2 triggers to attack. But um, yeah, I, I initially felt that from the very beginning, like the moment they showed the first trailer and the moment I played this demo and the Cuff and Frey were talking, it's like, oh, okay, this is... See, the, the skyboxes are super cool. I imagine there's, they were still working on some of the, the face models a little bit, but it's okay. You know, but, you know, the cloak physics and the water physics and um, moving around, like I said, it's all very cool. But I don't understand why I care, per se. And then I thought, oh my god, if if this, this, this wide linear type of experience, like if this were FF7 Rebirth, and these were, these were the zones right there. Like here's the mountain ranges that you can't cross, but you can travel between them as if it were an open world thing. Then even swapping out the characters, the character models in the world, but exact same mechanics, it would be a completely different experience. And you can, I think that game just replace Frey with Yuffie and this with Midgar, it would feel completely different. And everyone everyone that was was playing this oh, demo God. would have a completely different it? reaction to this in my mouth. than they're having with it now. I, I guess the other comparison I was sort of making with this game and with FF16 is that Luminous Studios is inarguably a more Western studio. Um... It's a more international studio. FF16 was sort of making itself out to be like that too. Like, yes, it's it's you can still tell it has a, a J kind of FF14 anime kind of aspect, but it was clearly designed more for Western audience first because the voice actors were, I think, done in English first. How do the controls feel in this demo? They're very smooth. I mean, once you get used to them. Everyone was complaining that, oh, when I push left, she doesn't immediately go left. When I push right, she doesn't immediately go right. There's a bit, a slight, a slight lag, but you don't, you don't normally move around like this anyways. You normally move around with the, the sprint and the sprint is instantaneous. Um, from what I'm playing of this game, the controls are very crisp. They're very smooth. I, I haven't had a complaint. It's very forgiving, actually, when you're being attacked and you're holding down the circle button, which is like the this parkour button, you can dodge a lot of attacks almost automatically. So I, I don't have any complaints about the controls of this game uh, at all so far. The specs list is really just stupid. I'm gonna, uh, for spoken be an unoptimized mess of a game. Yeah, in terms of the graphics, maybe this is just an, an engine thing that they haven't yet fully <laughs> fully resolved yet. How the Still, hell am I, supposed to keep I mean, my at this point, clean in this shit. There's no... Well, I don't think there's any... You're right, there's way. absolutely no excuse for that at you this know point. How hard these were to get my hands on? I mean, Ugh. I could sort of understand why FF15 had this issue, and even the PS5 version of FF15 was not running at full 30 FPS, at least it wasn't for me. I mean, at this point, your game is defined, your company is defined by the very engine, so that looks even worse. You know, like imagine if the RE engine just tanked for Resident Evil 2 Remake and 3 Remake and so on. It's unfortunate that this game is so defined by the engine, I think, more so than the gameplay. Which is weird. Which is super weird. It's like they knew... It's like Luminous, they knew that their engine is designed for these, like, super hyper-realistic hyper open worlds. Okay, so let's find some story that we can shove an open world into. Which is not probably the best way to go about your game design. I think F-16 is going to be way bigger than we think, and Revenge trailer just shocked me. Given Yoshida's past behavior with misdirecting us in trailers, I think so. 
this game, I think, is going to be probably more interesting than we realize because the trailers are not giving us all that, but I'll have to see. I mean, there was, like, open-world combat stuff in New York, like modern-day New York as well, that kind of threw me off balance at first. So I, I have to see. I'm, I'm being probably a little bit more lenient and forgiving on this game for now until the final game comes out. I'm going to play it uh, day one. Uh, one thing I'm honestly glad isn't happening is that 60 isn't a fully open world. Well, like I said, I'm, I'm no, I don't think a fully open world Final Fantasy game is inherently a bad thing. It's just that the, the game needs to justify the open worldness. There are games that have done open world Final Fantasy that, that... I'm sorry, not Final Fantasy, but open world designs that worked. And there are ones that absolutely did not. And there are ones that were linear that should have been more open world and vice versa as well. 15 didn't work because it didn't justify the open world. It was just a bunch of empty, empty nothingness. Uh, sort of like this world, except there's a little bit more variation in the elevation topology. I, I think what 15 technically, on a technical sense, wanted to be. So it's like, could you have given us this, this game, <laughs> but with like 15's characters, Maybe they shouldn't have made Forspoken. Maybe they should have made like FF15, like you know, Noxus Returns or something, and give it like this, this update, graphic-wise. Maybe it would have been different. We would have cared more. FF16 was first recorded in English, and then English cast is the one that did the performance capture. Yeah, that's right. And especially Ralph Ineson, Ralph Ineson as TG Sid, uh, for sure. I'm gonna be playing it with the English voice actors. I hear Lumisense is a huge mess, not as bad as Crystal Tools, but rushed. Um, rushed? I don't know if it's rushed. It, Luminous, the Luminous engine was, well, number one, it was a bit cobbled together at the initial stages, but also a lot of their developers uh, moved in and out. They were originally part of Business Unit, Business Division 5, I think, before the Square Enix consolidated their creative business units down to four. So it was... It's like it's passed through a bu bunch of different hands and not it wasn't like the original team that built this engine from the beginning is the same team that built it now so you know like as you're iterating through an engine with different staff members it can become a confusing mess because the people that come on have to relearn everything back to the very start and that isn't necessarily how it, it turns out and so um ff14 and uh, FF14's engine is actually cobbled from bits of Luminous engine as well, or at least some of the staff members did it. Am I going to play a remake? Yes, I'm absolutely going to play RE4 Remake uh, day one, FF16 as well. But a demo is still a glimpse into... That's the weird thing. A lot of games, they give you a demo that is the the preview of what is to come. Shall we make a move? FF7 did the same you thing. Um, even you just like Stranger of Paradise absolutely gave you a, a taste of the things to come. I'm not sure if this demo is selling the game the way they want you to experience it. I don't necessarily buy the the argument that, well, the reason why this game, we don't care about it is because the character is not like a JRPG typical character. I'm not, I'm not su a super big stickler on that. Oh, he's, he's gone. Um, you can give us totally like, very realistic looking characters that are very different from what you're used to but it can still be a very very fun game i just think the marketing around frey as a character wasn't very good i i don't know i haven't yet fully met someone that they only cared about the gameplay and nothing else i mean they may have claimed that but i don't think that's ever truly been the case you care about the story and the characters to some degree. And that's not necessarily talking about the writing of the game. It is about the story. Um, the story can be told in in so many different ways, in the character design and everything. So if that's not working for you, but something and like you saw you saw from that crappy that crappy 3D game I just made in Unity. Like if you don't have a story world, that's all your game really is. It's just like a little a little capsule a 3D model and a bunch of Seems the break hasn't taken hold too thoroughly. A bunch of, here, yeah. uh, of rectangle box this is collision more than platforms enough. and that's it. Thanks. But notice how once you put in the character and put in the world models and the 3D animation and such, somehow 
the game feels different. It feels alive, you know? Yeah, I gameplay can only take you so far because like if if all you yeah, have yeah, is gameplay, then what you've got, got is a game that just tests your your reflexes. And it's true that if your gameplay is just so, so genre-defining, you know? It. If it's so genre-defining, if it's yep. so unique, if it's okay. something we just haven't seen before, but that is almost impossible at this point. Like, what haven't we seen before? Maybe if this were like the 90s and you came out with Doom or Wolfenstein, where the um, that kind of faux 3D simulation was a new thing, uh, then yeah, then that the gameplay by itself and nothing else, absolutely nothing else, could totally sell it. But is Forspoken really giving you anything that you haven't seen before? Near one over automata. Uh, I'm gonna slightly disagree. I think, I think both. It really wasn't the gameplay. I don't think necessarily that sold you on both. Um, Replicant. Its appeal was probably more in its characters, but not necessarily in its story. I think automata. Its strength was more in its story, but not necessarily in its characters. So it's like, it, which one do you prefer? Do you prefer the more plot-focused story? Or do you prefer the more character-focused story? Automata, the story is there I was, built on conflict. So the whole purpose of the, the, what was driving the entire story was just defeating these, these robots, these machines, right? Because you're trying to save humanity, humanity's fled to the moon. And then the big twist was that, oh, humanity's been dead for a long time. And Replicant, it's, story was actually driven by a compelling question because the near guy and um what was her name yorna uh, the, the, your sister you essentially died at the beginning of the game but then somehow like a thousand years later or 500 years later you're alive again and so the big question was well what, what the hell i mean who are you and what are these weird shade things that are attacking you and it turns out in the end Oh, those shades are like the souls, the muscle souls that were separated from their replicant shells. And that's super cool. And towards the end, it was a very compelling, a compelling answer. But the, along the way, along the way to that answer, the question didn't really build. In fact, it, it often stagnated. Replicants explanation of its lore was a bit getting a bit fruity <laughs> you know, borderline and just like hocus pocus magic whereas automata ha had far more i guess more scientific kind of explanations so it, there was li a little bit more cohesion like i'm not surprised that yoko taro directed and wrote automata but he did not write i don't think replicant at least not fully or he didn't direct it i don't think um here you can actually upgrade your skills or embark on missions that will upgrade your skills. Yeah, oh, accessories, you got fingernails and such too. So in terms of like visual polish, I think it's this game's cool. Did I not learn any of this stuff yet? Hmm. Okay, let's let's try to fight the big bad monster. And I'll show you what I'm talking about. In terms of uh I think this game has satisfying gameplay. Another day's adventure awaits. Does it have satisfying repeated like gameplay? I fun. don't know. I don't think it has satisfying exploration yet. Characters are very flat, at least from what I'm seeing in the demo. I mean, do you... Oh, god damn it! Ow, ow, ow. Oh, check this out. I can cheese this. I can cheese this. There we go. Hmm. Uh, all right, this this enemy is no joke. Let me see if I can, I can do this. Uh, this dude is no joke. One hit from anything and I'm down to critical health. And I have 12, 12 droughts. Okay, let's get into some combat coitus here. Okay. If I have more skills. Minions! Okay. Okay, careful, 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 careful. Yeah, this guy does not stun very easily. Come on. Come on, big boy. Get out of the way. <laughs> Dude does not... Yeah, see, and if I hold... If I hold the, the circle button, which is like the parkour dash button, it will auto-evade attacks. 
certain attacks. This game's combat satisfaction will depend heavily on how many skills you actually have. Because I'm not noticing a lot of variation in... In terms of like the effects that your attacks have, it's more like the range. There you go. Oh, perfect, perfect, perfect. If I can choose one skill, uh, I would have to choose this. That has a stun effect. Although, just so far. In a lot of ways, some of these fights, um, once you get into like the hard versions of these fights... Oh, god damn it. They're a little bit like Dark Souls kind of fights, where you don't entirely know exactly how to deal with the enemy just yet. But as you, uh, number one, gain more skills... Oh god, oh god. Oh god, you're pissed off. Yeah, I get it. Yep. No. Oh god. Yeah. Stun locks me. No. Redeemed ban and in-game action? Oh, no fire. No fire. Oh, shoot. Okay. Hmm. Instant loading, where are you? I gotta use this. I gotta use this. These crappy spells. Yeah. Oh, enemies are absolute. There's elementals in this game, so enemies are absolutely weak against certain spells, and they are strong against certain spells. Unlike 16. FF 16's spells are more role based than they are like elemental based, which I actually appreciate. I think that's the opposite here. That's a that's a good observation. It's the opposite here. Here. Your spells are more elemental based and less role based. Whereas in 16, it's the opposite. Your skills are more role based and less elemental based. In fact, you can attack fire based enemies with fire spells, which shouldn't make any sense in FF16. But the spells perform a different role. Like some are ranged, some are melee, some have some kind of an area of effect. Now, can I hit you with some. an Uzi! Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, 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 you're pissed off, you're pissed off. Yeah, this doesn't work. The, um, those bind spells do not work against this, these big enemies. And Cup's gonna be complaining all this time. Oh, why I'm fighting like a shithead. Oh no! Okay, okay. How about that? Okay. You feel it clearly? Well, here, uh, that would That's actually be terrible much. if they implemented some kind of a pawn system here, because, uh... Can you not? Can you not? Can you not? Can you not? Please? Okay. Yeah, this doesn't work. I grew a plant. I grew a plant against a mutant alligator. Okay, he's gonna die, but very, very slowly. And, um, this is a glass cannon fight. If he hits me even once, I'm, I'm a dead person. Okay. Yeah, yeah, come on. Ready? Test me. Test me. Not like that. Okay. Do not understand the concept of bullets. You will die at some point. You will die at some point. Ready? Zero? What in crap's name, dude? Can I store this up? Use this? Can I use this? That's my saving grace right there. Oh, shoot! Right in my face. I'm sorry. See, in FF16, since it's can you not, 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 can you not. Okay, he's not giving up. Go the other way. In FF16, since your actions are role-based instead of elemental-based, you can absolutely, with one skill set, take out one enemy like this. But not so here. Uh, I'm more or less limited. I also painted my fingernails. Now I'm pretty and I'm powerful. Hmm. Clutch. Are there any that allow me to dig my nails into the throats of my enemies and suck their blood out? Healing effect. Hey, that, that's cheap, man. Oh, man. You got me in a, a menu lock. Whereas I don't think 16 will be like that. I think it will encourage a lot of variation in in like attack styles even within one icon skill set so see this game seems like it's not going to be fun until you get a lot of skills 
right? A lot of skill sets, like the fire set and the wind and earth and all that stuff. But I think 16 will be fun from the outset. It'll be fun even if you only have one skill set, like one uh, set of Phoenix and such. And dodging is very, very generous. If you're essentially just holding down the circle, the circle button and um, sprinting, I think you're more or less invulnerable. Whatever. So it's really about timing your sprint. Because this dude is a... He's being a shithead. Let me confuse him. Oh, moving this way! They will? I just don't know at what point they will add all those skills That's into the game. Doing much. Um, one of the members of Final Fantasy Union, Lor Lauren, I think her name is, she said that she actually played the, the full game and that the demo was not necessarily indicative of the full game because it's more like what you're playing in the demo here is like Frey after she's been buffed out quite a bit. But at the early stages of the game, if you don't have all these skills, then... You know, like, one skill set isn't quite enough. I think this dude is getting more aggressive. <gasps> Down to one more drought! One more drought! One more drought! But it was an ordinary life, the day of Frey, until one day she met the bracelet of her life at Kay's Jewelers. But she couldn't afford it because she was homeless. Here's a chance for her to start a life all over again. Okay, I'm about to get super screwed up. Oh no! Last healing, last healing. So these battles where you're at the edge of your seat, like about to die. Uh, yeah. But again, like this is really more of a game mode thing than a game design thing. Oh, finally, finally, oh god! Jesus, man, that took, what, like 70-something percent of his health to take him down to stagger mode? And uh, Frey also alters the animations of her attacks when you're in, if you are also in parkour mode. So you notice how as uh, she gets out of parkour mode, she like kind of rolls as she attacks. I also noticed that there's not a lot of opportunities so far to use the terrain to your advantage. Like, I can't use rocks necessarily to as a shield. This? You're almost dead! You're almost dead! I almost got you! No! Oh god, oh god, okay, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta run for a moment. Can you not, can you not, sir? Can you not, can you not, can you not? Get in, swipe! Okay, get some HP back. Oh no, 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 I'm doing, some of my attacks are doing zero damage, like what the hell? Thank the parkour, actually, there's a mo, there's a, a setting that allows you to restore your parkour quite fast. Um, on the default settings, you notice how when I sprint, the, those, those four diamonds, those five diamonds on the bottom left, they refill quite fast. Uh, by default, they don't fill quite as fast. No, 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 no. If I hold the parkour button, the dash button, as uh, the enemy's attacking, I do this kind of flippy-dippy thing. I mean, thank God for that. If it weren't for that, if I'm anywhere within range, I think I'm dead. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on! No, 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 yeah, but clearly that was not the way that this game was meant to be played. <laughs> so, see, the difference the difference is that I think in FF16, if I only had one skill set, like if you limited me only to Phoenix, for example, I, I could have easily, easily taken out that boss in a more satisfying way. Now, could you still kill them? Sure, but it's not very satisfying. You know, you just uh, kite them around and such. Yeah, face models are still a little bit rough. They spent too much of the budget on the physics.
that's only wow that's two days away so yeah we'll be streaming this on tuesday actually so that's the difference i mean if this is a game that you care about the world and you care about the characters that's the difference between clearing the msq versus clearing the msq and then full platinuming it because ff7 remake was a game that a lot of people just platinum because it was just so nostalgic and engrossing um, so that was my experience yeah with playing this demo for the first time and then now revisiting it. The very first time, the controls were a bit hard to get used to. Uh, but once I actually slowed everything down to where I can think, like, and then I got, I, I got it. Okay, so R1 is for this magic that you bind to the R1 button, the magic set, and then L2 is the same thing. Yeah, I don't, I don't blame you if you end up getting this game when it gets cheaper. There's, like right now, if you just gave me the trailers and some of the GDC talks and the director talks, does it hype me up to want to absolutely buy this game day one or even week one or month one? I wouldn't say so. But for for the fact that this is FF15's legacy and FF15's legacy in terms of its engine and its development, but also FF16's kind of legacy in terms of its the direction of its marketing I mean not its actual marketing campaign but the direction in which it is trying to market its games more towards like the western audience first I think this is an important game for me to to, to day one and to really look at in terms of the like all the all of Square's games RPG games are now going more action uh, turn based stuff is really more relegated to the switch kind of games like baby default but th this is clearly trying to go more in the direction of the future of where Square Enix wants to go with its its big AAA title. This was meant to be a big AAA title. This was rumored to be Matsuda's pet project, you know, to be more of a Horizon God of War type of thing. Whether it does that or not, I don't see it so far, but who knows. This game Journey has been clearly announced too soon as Project Athia. You know, I kind of wonder if they had used the original um, Agni's philosophy character models would have been different. Agni's philosophy's tech demo from way back when, it was clearly more Western like this, but I think at least the character models were more, actually more in line with FF 15 and 14. So... I don't know. I mean, is part of it just the character design? Is part of it just Square Enix's legacy with being a more J kind of company and then people kind of expect a certain kind of character? People had the same thing, the same reaction to Stranger of Paradise when it came out. And arguably that game would have gotten a bit more better reception had Jack not looked like Eminem and had his uh, character design not looked like a, a, a male model from The Gap. But I don't know, I enjoyed that game also for its lore, but maybe they're at a point where they're testing what exactly we're willing to tolerate <laughs> as far as what is considered a Final Fantasy game. For Spoken, it's like PS5 next big test after Ragnarok. That is, that is true, because you don't normally get the next generation games until about two to two and a half years after the, the console launches, because even towards the end of a console's generation, as the new console launches, games that were in development like two years ago were still being developed on the previous console. So yeah, at, at this point, you're right, at this point, Forspoken, RE4 Remake, FF16, and also Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, they're all going to be finally testing the true limits of the PS5. I'm not even entirely sure who this game is marketed towards, to be honest with you. They remake 8 one day. Well, they remastered it. Do they really need to re remake as in remake, like, like fully remake? Like the combat system is different and the the way that 7 Remake remade 7? I don't know if any game really justifies the remake other than 7, to be honest. Because 7... This is what, here, this is what Square Enix wants. Um, and this is kind of what every game company wants. They want something similar to Final Fantasy XIV in the sense that it's an IP they can keep monetizing. Because you can build it out once, and then yes, you build out expansions, but you can build out that game once, because every single Final Fantasy game is its own thing. 
and then you keep mining that IP over and over again throughout the years. And that's what I'm saying about um, the whole game narrative thing of being like the special sauce because what many game developers want now is they want audience retention. They want people to get invested into that IP and be loyal to it. And of all the Final Fantasy games, I, I think only seven has had that kind of staying power because it's been transformed into movies and manga and all that stuff. Whereas I don't think anything else has had that kind of effect. Sure, I mean, like Zidane has appeared in like Chocobo Racing, <laughs> but more as like a cameo and in Dissidia, but it's not like an empire in the way that Seven is. 14 has also reached that exalted status of being this game that they can mine over and over, but that's because it is an MMO, which is a little bit different. FF15 was FF10 part two answer to K-pop? Was it, was it really? Was my instinct correct? Was my instinct correct that it was essentially a, you know, that's funny. Final Fantasy VIII and Final Fantasy XV are the only two Final Fantasy games where, in a sense, it felt more realistic. You know, because all Final Fantasy games tend to be built off of motifs. Whereas 8 and 15, all the characters more or less are of the same age, have the same background. I mean, in 8, it was literally the same background. Uh, where, so it's like Final Fantasy meets... Re Maybe Final Fantasy 8 was Final Fantasy meets reality before we even knew it. I remember it was kind of weird having to draw magic and then use it. The junction wasn't all that bad. I mean, the only thing that was really annoying about the junction system and also the material system was that you couldn't create loadouts that can swap easily to different characters and so it was very messy when you had to swap between your three characters and then to another three characters and such i think a lot of the final fantasies will continue to exist in some kind of a legacy format um in terms of like the in terms of where square enix is going though forward i don't think those games will ever get remade i mean Final Fantasy VII Remake, the budget for that game was, I don't remember, was it like 150 or 200 million? Maybe it was 200 million total with marketing, but like that's huge. The, you, you can't justify that unless the game has done a tremendous volume of sales. Final Fantasy IX, I think, has done for its lifetime about 10 million units sold. See, Final Fantasy is a weird franchise in the sense that the, the player base keeps growing, but the games really don't. <laughs> Like, how do you get the new players in? But then, of course, there's all of us that played it way back when. That, you know, we still love them. But we're getting old. Is there a huge demand for Final Fantasy V or VI? They never remade or gave the same amount of love to Final Fantasy V, which was one of my favorite games, as it did to VI, for good reason. Because the sales numbers just don't justify it. Not even with four, actually. But they do make homages to it, like with Final Fantasy XIV. So I imagine those games will continue to get some, some kind of port, you know, as we move to the Switch and the Switch Plus and Ferris. And uh, yeah, like, I think Final Fantasy IV through... One through three will probably keep being referenced in future games as like an homage or an easter egg four five and six eight nine um i would say arguably ten they will continue to get ports of some kind as we get newer consoles because they realize those ips are valuable i mean they're not as valuable as seven or 14 but they can keep mining it for more more profit um 13 i really really hope it finally gets to the ps store at some point <laughs> um final fantasy 12 has kind of been more of like an outlier uh final fantasy 10 i'm just saying arguably because it's done sales wise it's done tremendously well i don't know if it's like remake worthy but 15 will probably receive the same treatment as 13 16 we'll have to see I think we just take it for granted that that seven got remade, but keep in mind that seven <laughs> seven came out during a time when there were very few games made, and that game was so special because it was so different. It was like our introduction to it, and it was so completely vast and 
a new kind of world that we'd never seen before, and then it's like it cemented itself in the world of video gaming. What really is required to do that now? I mean, if you're on the Last of Us status or God of War status, maybe. But it's hard to think about what is required to make Final Fantasy 16 really a remake-worthy game. It would have to do so, so well. It would have to sell into the level of like 20 or 30 million units or something within its first maybe couple of years in order for Square Enix to justify making a remake of the game. I think it'll get like DLCs and stuff and expansions. But uh, maybe we'll never see a remake on the level that Seven got ever again until there's some kind of a huge genre-defining moment. Is Forspoken that genre-defining moment? I don't think so. Uh, I really don't think so. At least not yet. But uh, we'll have to see. From what I'm seeing here, am I blown away? I'm blown away by the engine. I'm so blown away by the level of democratization that we have in the tools of game development, as I'm seeing now in Unity. Uh, that Unity demo I made was... There was actually very little code written. A lot of the engine does the work for you, and it's really about learning the process of binding assets and components together. But uh, that's kind of about it. I'm from a different generation, so the games that are being made right now, I don't think, I, for Spoken as well, it's not necessarily towards my demographic, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. Um, but they do appeal to me, even though it's not targeted at my demographic. So, so far from what I'm seeing, combat-wise, yeah, I'd say with enough variation in the abilities, this game can be very, very fun. Is it meaningful? Is it memorable? Is it emotionally satisfying? I can't say yet. But yeah, it, it tests my reflexes. I enjoy killing things. Don't necessarily enjoy exploring things. So that's the, the verdict for now.